My name is Jessica O. Matthews, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Uncharted Play. Our flagship product is the socket. The socket is a soccer ball that actually harnesses the kinetic energy that's generated during play and then stores this power inside the ball so it can be used as an off-grid power source. The idea for the whole product, though, came from my experiences in Nigeria. One of the things that I would always see while I was there was just the general need for reliable electricity. So we started to look at working with different governments to be part of either their energy uh, programs or their universal basic education programs. We realized that now we can really start to kind of create a global system. It's one thing to be noted as having a great innovation or a great invention. It's another thing to be really noted as a business that has found a way to be sustainable. And once you have a couple of years under your belt, then you can start to dream a little bit bigger. But it's, it's important not to, to lose sight of what's right in front of you. Your time is now. Career pivots that are definitely necessary during these tumultuous times. If you think about it, the key to unlocking the full potential usually can be traced back to pivotal moments. And I am so excited today to have two colleagues who represent an area of expertise that can really help us think about how we can pivot and how we can make things happen, even given the pandemic racial injustice, the upcoming election, everything that's going on and we're swirling in right now. So I would like to be able to introduce you to Jill Gibson, who is the Senior Director of Talent Programs for Walmart, and Janine Uzel, who's the COO of Wikimedia Foundation. You can't have two better colleagues who are going to give you their opinions, their advice, and their perspective about how we can make it best through the times we're living. So I'm gonna open it up, colleagues, to the very first question, and that is, what does it mean to pivot? Are the skills required, are the skills required pre-pandemic different from what is required today? What are your thoughts? Roger, I'll start. Um, I, I think the skills are very different in this environment. I mean, when we talk about pivoting right now, um, whether it's about making a career switch in your career, whether it's adding dimension to your career in terms of new skills, um, there's just really an opportunity right now to reinvent oneself. And um, companies are really looking to different skills right now, um, whether it's about agility and being um, very situational adaptable, really. Um, we are all requiring new ways of working right now whether it's about organizational savviness while we're all working remotely, mm -hmm. um, whether it's about the strong emotional intelligence. It's something we have always said is critical of our leaders, but right now when we're working in this dispersed work environment and everyone is stressed beyond ways we ever thought, um, it's also about cultivating innovation right now. Um, in the past, we'd be able to walk into a room, work around a whiteboard and um, create and innovate together. Right now we have to think about how we innovate in different ways. So I think they're very different skills now than what we required of everyone just six months ago. Thank you. You know, Jill, I'm gonna add to that and say, and there's some bravery and some creativity that's gonna be required because the resiliency that we're going through and can and needing to have as we endure in these tough times are going to have the true leaders rise to the top, right? Leadership kind of floats. So it's going to go to the top. And then I think women like us are going to be in the mix and we're going to be given some unique opportunities to create the solutions that are needed to solve a problem. And so you're going to take some of those old skills, some of the new ones that Jill talked about, and then, for many of us, we're going to have an opportunity to put something together and create our next opportunity. And I want us to be brave about that. I'm doing that a little bit even with my current role and um, how we approach equity from the office of the COO. So it involves some creativity and some bravery to say, um, I'm here to solve some big problems. And here are the skills I've had, here are the new skills and the agility that Jill talked about. And then here's how I wanted to find how we solve this problem. 
And think about it now, when you all talk about, you're talking about the bravery, Janine, and Jill, you're talking about you're gonna need new skills, but we know that we, at, at a fundamental level, are resistant to change. What is a mental model? I mean, how do I get my arms around and have that bravery to step out and embrace doing things differently? I mean, how do I push through the fear or this, the discomfort that comes with change? Well, I'm an engineer, so look, we always just wanna do it by the book, straight line, connect the dots, do it right. So here I am talking about all this creativity and bravery. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself to do it too, because we are very structured people. At the same time, we're women and we solve big problems. And so we can't sit by and watch something just kind of clunk along and be ineffective. And, you know, I think it just kind of causes you to have some, this like outer body experience. Like I can't watch this go down like that. And, um, and so we're creating the solutions, but I mean, I'm saying it and I'm also practicing it and the headspace for me is that, um, I keep reminding myself that these times, there's not a single person that I've worked with that's ever led through a global pandemic. So none of us have, have figured this thing out right. So I can't be wrong. You know, I'm figuring, you know, anything that I can, can offer is going to be a great idea. And it's not like anyone's ever had this expertise before. So I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of leaning into the courage piece. Okay. Yeah, I, I um, what you're saying resonates with me quite a bit um, about trusting yourself, trusting your instincts, yeah. um, and also this notion of not being afraid to act. Um, failure to act is is almost um, something we should almost be more afraid of. Um, at this time, to your point, Janine, we're all learning something new. There, there's no blueprint for it, um, and just trying is critical. I, I think it's so important just to try right now. And even if we don't get it right the first time, we're going to learn so much by what we try and we're going to change and we're going to continue to pivot and continue to adapt. Um, and so for me, it's really about trusting ourselves and just taking that step and the next step and the next step day in and day out. Well, then, then, so you start taking the step and the step and the step. Um, how do you stay focused? and minimize distraction. Because it seemed like, and, and to me, one of the things around distraction is sometimes you have to tell yourself you gotta get out of your own way. You know, what is to cause me to say discipline to, okay, I know I have to do it. I'm gonna keep putting that step in front of that step in front of that step. But that distraction can come in so easily. How do, how do, I, um, how do I stay focused? I know for me, it's about the micro steps I take day in and day out. It's not trying to solve the world. It is, what is that small micro step that I need to take? Um, and it's, it's also about being very intentional of how I spend my time. Um, I, when I start each morning, I'm not thinking everything I have to do, everything I have to accomplish, but it's really day in and day out. What are, what are, what's the minor or small things I absolutely need to accomplish that day. I'm not trying to run a marathon overnight. I may just be focused on taking a walk around the block. Um, there are so many distractions we're all dealing with right now. We're working from home. We're dealing with spouses who are sharing the internet and also looking for space. Some of us are homeschooling um, or have children home from college. We all have so many dis distractions each and every day, but I think it's about forgiving ourselves it's about taking those small steps and being very intentional about how we spend our time. Okay. You know, I have um, an agreeing with Jill and a perspective as a single woman, the distractions are actually isolation in itself. Sometimes I don't have anything to pull me. All I have is work in, in many of these, many of these long days and long months. And I know that I'm not, you know, the only single person, um, that is managing this and it, that has been just as tough even though i know there are plenty of folks that say they would love to maybe have some some space and some alone time um we don't always have the same things to pull us away and then i'm quick to just want to boil an ocean because you know i'm just always trying to solve everything right away and so i do have to try and 
and walk it back to the one thing. The office of the COO can be a bit of a dumping ground where everything that doesn't want to get fixed, either no one wants to fix it or they don't know how to fix it, it drops off in my space. And so we end up with a lot of add-on work and prioritizing and really ensuring that I am focused on the big things. And I honestly don't always do that myself. I count on my team to help me stay aligned. They're often pulling things off my plate saying not today or not right now. And um, I have to get some reminders from my thought leaders and my friends and other folks that are reminding me hey, you've been going, 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 it's time to stop. Because sometimes I don't have that internal um, shut off. So um, I have other people that are keeping me accountable. Janine and Jill, I've been sitting here sort of reflecting on the fact that when you think about where we were in January, bringing in a new year, then in comes the pandemic. Then on top of the pandemic, what exploded in the country around racial injustice thinking about how we continue to swirl with the fires in California, the floods, the election coming up. I mean, everybody keeps saying, can it get any worse? But as I was sitting there thinking about it, I wanted to ask the two of you this question. There has to be something good that comes out of all of this. You know, what are some of the unexpected opportunities that you feel have presented themselves as a result of the world, you know, how do we come out of this better? I mean, what what's the silver lining in 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 our current reality? Can I jump in here? I sure. think one of the things I'm I'm most excited about and I'm seeing, I do believe that while uh, protests would have been powerful, uh, regardless, I do think that with folks having been home. Um, we saw a lot more people engaged in so much of what has been happening. And I think that is, at least from a technology perspective, it's shined a very powerful light on the power of technology as it relates to social justice and injustice and equity. And I believe that one of the things that will continue to grow and come out of um, everything that we're going through right now is going to be an opportunity for black tech to really have a powerful imp impact on black lives matters in fact black tech for black lives matter is a thing it's um it's work that's being done um many of us that are techies and you know we're striking for black lives matter and using our keyboards for good and there are people that are coming up with really innovative products and opportunities that I believe um, will catch the eye of venture capitalists and funders and really have an opportunity to grow in the space of technology and its influence in, in equity and diversity and some of the challenges um, that are in the tech space. And I'm, I'm really hopeful that that's going to, to keep its momentum and platforms like this will, will allow us the opportunity to continue to talk about them. You know that, you, that there, it all, as I'm listening to you, I'm feeling like there's a lot of energy around it and people are excited. So it seems like even during these, this tough time, you're getting spaces where there's a whole lot of energy and excitement around making an impact that's gonna be sustained over time. And, and really using, honestly, your anger and your frustration to fix something. And I, I, that's what I'm hearing and seeing. That's what coders are doing. They are frustrated and, and angry and disappointed, but they're using um, oh, the tech it. skills for good. Yes, that's like John Lewis said, good trouble. Good trouble. Love good it. Good tech trouble. Good tech trouble. That mm -hmm. is great. What else are you thinking about, Gia? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say the focus on racial equity right now. I remember after George Floyd was murdered, I remember waking up and wondering why all of a sudden it seemed like the world woke up. And I was jaded, to be honest. I was like, this isn't new. You know, George Floyd isn't the only one. Um, and, and I struggled internally for a bit on this. And then I started seeing people have some really real conversations. Um, and I started seeing um, companies and nonprofits and people make some 
commitments to really address some of the systemic change. I'm not saying I think all of a sudden we're going to wake up kumbaya moment and Martin Luther King's dream is going to come alive. But at some point, I really did feel that there's going to be change that's um, going to happen. And I see it now. Um, and so whether it's um, blacks in technology leveraging their skills to impact change, whether it's people making doing protests in the street, I actually see change. Um, and I feel better about it for, for my children and, and for mine. Now, when you think about um, the examples that you all just gave, is, is it, um, I mean, I, I can only imagine what it does for the spirit and just getting people excited about the fact that we are going to make a difference and that we have some control. I'm going back to what you said, Janine, about people taking their anger and their frustration mm -hmm. and they're putting into something that's going to come out that's going to be good. Is this, um, is this the, both of your, which you, both of you are saying, are they like little bubbles or do you think it's creating an energy that's moving out so that people see it, it's, it's, it's creating its own, um, what, what am I trying to say? It's creating its own issue energy that can cascade out so that more people understand what is significant or what's something that we can all put our arms around knowing that things are going to get better. I'm trying to just think of ways in which we stay up and in and not feel so down and discouraged um, because of all that we're managing these days. I mean, I find it to be electric. For me, it's kind of, it's the thing that's helping me um stay energized on on some of the toughest days i'm reminded that we are having these conversations in the tech space i'm looking at products and and um work that's being coded and designed so i think that um and i think about even some of the um the groups that i'm a part of or the different um problems that we're res resolving even at the Wikimedia Foundation. For those that don't know about the foundation, we are the organization that operates Wikipedia. And so we're one of the top 10 websites in the world, uh, a major resource for free knowledge. I'm watching um, our page views and our participation in Wikipedia shoot millions and millions daily around COVID, around Black Lives Matter, Kamala Harris, issues that are, are happening each and every day. We're a resource and a tool that is, that is being ignited and communities are coming together to ensure that the stories are accurate and powerful and we're fighting injustice and um, inappropriate knowledge on that platform. And so for me, that is honestly inspiring me because I need it. I need some inspiration on these days. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I was trying to say. How do we get it out? Because we need the inspiration. You know, we need that electricity. We need to know those things. I mean, just the brief period of time we've had today, just hearing what you all are sharing, it gets me like, oh, okay, you know, something's going on out there that's different than what I see on the news every single day. Um, and and that, gives, that gives you hope. Because that's what I, I, I keep thinking. We have to come out of all of this with hope and understanding that we go, we're going to be okay and that we can grow and that we can learn and that we can pivot and that we can expand our skills and capabilities and that we will do it. Um, but it, but it's, some days it's just real tough, you know, so to hear these stories, it really brings such, it, I know it makes me, it makes my heart happy uh to hear it uh so thank you so much for sharing those examples now there is a term that i use and i call it not a term but sort of a phrase around grab or release and i want to talk about a little bit about what being able to pivot or being able to maximize opportunity during these tumultuous times around there are things that if we really want them, we should grab a hold of them with everything that we have. But there might be some things that we keep saying we want, but we're not doing anything about it. And maybe it's time to let it go. So my question to the two of you is what do you recommend that we need to amplify? And is there anything we need to diminish 
knowing what you're seeing and what's going to be required in terms of moving towards your next. You know, to what degree do we need to reinvent ourselves? What are your thoughts? When I think about it, I mean, I think a lot of it's, we all have an opportunity right now to kind of take stock and realize what's critical to us individually, personally, professionally, what have you. And we have an opportunity right now, we are all at such a critical juncture to really figure out what's important to us. Um, I remember another point in my life where I was miserable at work, but I felt like I was on a path and I needed to continue on that path. And it wasn't until a death in my family where I said, wait a second, tomorrow's not promised. Am I going to continue on this path? And made a decision not to. Um, and I feel like we're all kind of at that juncture right now where we can really just take stock and realize what's important to us personally. How do we spend our days, you know, um, at work, with family, with loved ones, what have you. Um, and this is a unique time where we can reinvent ourselves. Um, in many instances, when someone decides to change careers, um, people are going to look at the resume and say, what happened? Why, why, what was this gap in your employment? Or why did you make a change? But right now is the one time where people have that freedom to reinvent themselves. There's, I think, more opportunity, more flexibility, more understanding. Um, and I, I think it's really right now about just taking stock and figuring out what's important to us. Okay, thank you. I, I agree, Joe. It's like at some point you realize some of the practices and the things that you you picked up, you need to unlearn them, right? They don't serve you anymore in um in this space. It, it's a tough one because I'm, you know, because we we know how hard we as women, as black women, have worked to get where we are. And sometimes I I I find myself holding on to um begrudging uh maybe what I consider being overseen overlooked or a lack of respect for the level of achievement that I've gained. And um I've kind of done an, a stock on with myself and said there are some things that I'm just not going to be able to change. Um, whether it's certain processes or, or people, but I can help bring a different perspective and a narrative through who I am and the experience that I bring in every room and every table that I'm sitting at and every team that I'm leading, every organization. And I'm pushing myself every day to be that person and to bring that work and to say, I am not going to spend my moments or my time frustrated in people's lack of understanding capacity or desire to accept everything that I'm bringing into this space. If I'm here, I'm going to show up strong and I'm going to keep showing up until somebody tells me not to. And even then I'm going to ask why. Um, and so that is because I, you know, I found that other people have been betting on me my entire career. I'm the only one that hadn't been doing it for a while. So shame on me for not uh, taking a bet on myself. And I did, you know, and now I'm coming into this space like um, I'm not going to spend my time dealing with your inabilities or to see and to recognize um, who we are and what we bring. Instead, I'm going to focus on leading people you know, growing the work that we do and really having an impact. I believe that um, there's a significant work that women like us bring to every space that we're in. And um, I'm missing my responsibility to deliver when I'm so focused on, on all the distractions. You t both of you just tapped on something that just caused me to go, hmm. As I've listened to what you've shared, there is a fundamental belief that you can take it all the way. I mean, like, I know I can't let these things get in the way. There's, there's something in me in terms of how I'm going to contribute and what I'm going to do. So my question to you is having a high impact belief system, having a, a sense that I can make some things happen. Where did that come from? Is that always been a part of you since you were a little girl or were there certain 
events that causes you to really understand just how good you are. But sometimes we stumble and then if we're not careful, we fall. And then it's hard to get back up as opposed to we stumble, we fall and we're resilient and we pop right back up and say, okay, I've learned something. I'm not gonna get caught up in those distractions. I know where I'm going and I'm going. So my question again is, where is your, where did your, have you always had such a strong belief or was it shaped over time in who you are? I would say for me, it's shaped over time. Um, when you're younger, you're, you're insecure, you're not confident. Um, but over time, you, you have failures and it's how you respond to your point about being resilient, learning from those failures and recognizing you usually have more growth in the failures than you do in terms of immediate successes. Um, I would also say times when you're pushed outside your comfort zone. Um, I know there have been times in my career where I have been forced to do something that I just didn't think I could do. And it was those times when I was most uncomfortable where I grew the most. And I surprised myself. Um, and I'm like, oh, I, I did that? I didn't even know I had that in me. So um, for me, it was something over time and something that you know, experience and age um, contributed. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, I was very blessed to have both of my parents raise me. They're married. Um, my father passed away um, when I was in my 40s. So I had him my entire life. And um, that man had me crazy enough to just think I was the best thing coming and going. And I think that's what, I mean, I was raised by a really awesome Black man who who had me, he was just like, no, everybody else is crazy. You're right, you're fine. And that stuck with me, but I got the wind knocked out of me as I started to cross out of a maybe grammar school and you get a little older and you know life kind of hits you and peer pressure and maybe some bullying and teasing. And there's all kinds of things that, that, that took the wind out of my sail. And then I had to start over again. And that journey has been very difficult of growing over time back into um, a sense of, of assuredness and confidence because I think we, we have it in us and we, we want to support one another as black women, but there's so many other voices that play into everything that we do. And um, it's hard to, um, to block out those voices and it takes a, a strong tribe and a strong um, collection of people to help. Um, Jill, I don't know about you, but in, in most cases for me, um, I was, you know, maybe the only, the only woman, the, the, the only black woman, the first woman to get this type of job or to do this type of thing. So there is never really a template. You know, it's always me or us trying to make others um, understand or accept what we're able to do. So I've had to grow that muscle again over time. And um, and get myself back, and and then really guard um, guard myself so that I don't let others take that away from me again. Yeah, um, I what you're saying resonates with me very much, though, and it's something where you have to continue to um, come back to yourself and surround yourself with people who believe in you um, and who are going to be your support system, um, and take people who are your naysayers, get them out of your life to the extent that you can. Um, and it's, it's a continual process. It's not like all of a sudden you feel secure and confident and you have that day in, day out. But you have to continue to um, work on yourself and continue to focus on stuff. You know, if I could just say one quick thing to that. The world, even 2020 and beyond, at the end of the day, especially when you're in technology, um, the two things that the world is co most comfortable with in tech are white men. And we're never going to be that. So um, I am just working every day to say, well, I'm never gonna be the two things that you're most comfortable with. So here's what you got. And this is where we're gonna go with it. And some days my hair looks like this and other days it doesn't. And some days it show up like this. And, but what's in here and what I know I'm capable of doing, that's consistent. And that's what needs, um, that's what you need to focus on. And that's what I, I, that's what I try to bring into that space. Not easy, but that's what I work on. Yes. You said not easy, but that's what I work on. Right. Which means it's something that you're processing and managing all the time. 
but there's something that was fundamental in both of your comments, and it's about what's here. This might change, but like you said, I'm not going to become a white male tomorrow. So in this, in the, in the area, but and and I've chosen to be in tech. So understanding that, then there's some things that I'm going to have to figure out. So one of the things I would like for you all to do as we um, sort of think about all of our colleagues that are out there listening is what else represents either what you would call the secret sauce, what you would call the ingredients in the recipe of life, but you talked about how important having a strong community is and having people who believed in you and people who supported you. So we got that piece around, it's, it's important to have strong relationships around like-minded individuals. As you said, Jill, the naysayers, let them naysay themselves on out of the conversation. But there is important to be able to have that community around you. But what other gems, like, three, four things you can think of that you feel are non-negotiables, that, that Black women gotta, in tech got to understand that if you're going to go to the mat, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to figure it out, these are some things you need to give some serious thought to, you know, and you really need to think through and embrace what is going to be required for you to be able to be successful. So what other tips, gems, pearls, um, can you offer? Jill, you want to go first? I'm going to let you go. <laughs> I was waiting for you. <laughs> well, I'll say um, a few things. And um, the first one is I want to encourage any Black woman in tech that has an opportunity to take an international assignment to do that. See, it, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. It changes the game for you. It changes the game in how you lead uh, the perspective and the weight of the work that you've done when you do it globally. Uh, it's, it's a completely different model. It changes your finances and uh, it changes the, the, the visual or the, the understanding that others will have of you when you've had an international lens. And for me, I would say inter any international lens, but I specifically encourage working in emerging markets and markets that will benefit from having brown women seeing challenges and issues. We, we're gonna solve those problems so differently than any of uh, your colleagues would ever do. That, cha that completely changed the course of my career. Yes. And, um, so I'll stop there and I'll let Jill jump in and maybe we'll pay a little, little back and forth tennis with this one. I would say part of it is um, being in it for the long game, um, not always focusing on the near term. A lot of times people are thinking, I, you know, I need to get promoted to this next level. I need to have this salary. Um, and I'm so maniacally focused on that where sometimes we don't, value the experiences, whether it's taking an international assignment, maybe it's taking a lateral move, but that's going to give you some experiences and that um, will help you grow in the future in other ways. Um, and so I do think there's this, it, it is really taking that longer term view um, as opposed to always being very short term focus. Okay. I think we have 30 seconds left and Janine, there was something else you wanted to add. So just go on and wrap the ball around it. I agree with what, what Jill was saying about the long term. And then um, I, again, I want to encourage, it's, it's taking leadership roles a lot of times as techies where we're, we're way, way deep into the problem solving. And at some point um, it's very important to come up from there and say, you know, you can lead a team, uh, lead an organization because often technical women aren't leading these organizations. We're not the CTOs, we're not the product officers, and we need to be. We've got the technical expertise, but we've got to balance our, our techie ways with, with sharpening our, our leadership perspectives, the way that we communicate, the way that we um, exhort and lead, because those teams need women like us leading them as well. Yeah, and that is a wonderful way to wrap. They need us. So we need to step forward and embrace that and all that comes with it. Jill and Janine, thank you both so much 
for sharing your wisdom, your perspective, your expertise. And I know every single woman that's watching you appreciates what you've been able, the gifts you've given them. So again, thank you. And uh, we can call it a wrap. Thank you, Janine, Jill, and Audra. Don't forget that our speakers and career coaches that you'll meet this afternoon are available in the showcase throughout the day to answer your questions and offer great advice via live chat. And remember, for every interaction, you'll score points on our leaderboard toward great prizes. Joining our next session will earn you those points too. So here we go. Get your money right with JPMorgan Chase's customized wealth building strategies for Black women.